Hey, we got some NBA Live 19 gameplay. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that sub button. Let's get into it. I'm Cassidy Hubbard with ESPN. This year's NBA Combine is right around the corner. All the top prospects will be gathered in one spot to showcase their talents before the draft. Now, there's a lot of early buzz about a player that some are already dubbing the one. Straight out of high school, skipped college to fine-tune his skill set overseas at streetball and pro-am courts, where he gave an early indication of what he could do. The question is, can he keep it up under the intense scrutiny of actual NBA scouts? We'll be following this one's rise or fall. Keep it locked right here on ESPN. Okay, so we are looking at NBA Live 19, the NBA Draft Combine in The One. So this gameplay is presented to us by Shaq News, and I actually reached out to them and asked them if I can use their gameplay in my videos, like if I can repost it and give them the proper credit. And they saw my message, and then they left me on red, which, I, I mean, that kind of hurt a little bit, right? I mean, look, I was about to go back and just double check to say, hey, if you guys, you know, I was going to send them another message, but they just left me on red, which made me not want to send another message and made me just go ahead and do this anyways because everybody's really doing it. But I'm not going to post the whole gameplay. Now, in this gameplay, Kevin Knox is absolutely annihilating our player here, as you guys can see with that lockdown defense. Now, Kevin Knox, if you guys don't know who he is, he's a New York Knicks drafty or a New York Knicks player, I guess you can say now. And this dude straight up balled out during the summer league. So he's balling out during the NBA draft combine. Now, it also has to do with the fact that our person, the person who's playing this game right now, they aren't that good. And it kind of affects how we see the game because when the person who's playing the game isn't that good, it makes it hard to really get a gauge for what's going on, right? But I got a whole pros and cons thing. So I am actually, there's a possibility that I'm going to talk throughout this whole video, okay? So that's just a possibility. It's a slight possibility. I may not get all the way through it, but it's a possibility, okay? So let me just get right into it. The first thing, we have to talk about the cons. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the pros first because, nah, I don't feel like it. So the cons, the rookies. These rookies, they are supposed to be the 2018-19 draft class, but it doesn't look like them, like, at all. Or is it 2017? No, 2018-19. But it does not look like them. That's my only issue. I mean, Mo Bamba, DeAndre Ayton, Trey Young, all those guys, it does not look like them. Now, here's the thing. The only person that really looks like themselves is Marvin Bagley. And you guys will see it at some point. It'll cut in. You'll see Marvin Bagley. He kind of looks like himself, but everyone else, they don't really look like themselves. And I'm hoping that because the game isn't supposed to come out for like, what, another month or two, they're still going to fix it. So that's just where my heart is right now. I just hope that they're still going to fix it because I would hate for this to be the final version of the game because the way it is, it does not look finished for the rookies. It doesn't look finished. I mean, Mo Bamba looks tall, but his arms don't look long. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. I was the one guy just got crossed up so bad. It made me lose my chain, my train, my thought. I see what I, I can't even string together a sentence. That's how bad it was. Either way, either way, let me get back into the topic at hand here, okay? So the cons, the rookies, yeah, the rookies in the, the Mo Bamba's body, it doesn't really look like how it should look. I mean, the rookies' faces are all off, and Mo Bamba's arms are not long enough. They look long, but they look just as long as DeAndre Ayton's, who also doesn't look like himself. The other thing, this, these quarters here for this NBA Draft Combine, it's only two quarters. I personally would have loved there to be four quarters for this because it would give us our first taste at what it's like to play in the league. But they gave us two quarters and like, I don't remember how long the quarters are. I'm pretty sure it's like five minute quarters or something like that. Maybe a little more, but either way, it's not four quarters. But like, check this out real quick. You see this lockdown defense? You see how the arrow turns green every time he cuts him off? That is what I love about this game. People say that the gameplay is still a little clunky but it's different, and I'll tell you why. Yes, it may be a little clunky compared to 2K, but the clunkiness is not at a point where it's hard to play. For me, NBA Live 18 was a little hard to play. I just couldn't really get involved. I couldn't really, you know, allow myself to play that game because it was just a little difficult to get used to the clunkiness. But NBA Live 19, it feels different than 2K, but it's a nice different. It's its own thing, right? And it's fun because it's not 2K. 
But let me continue here because I keep going off the rails to talk about the gameplay that you guys are currently looking at. So let me get back at it right here. The other thing I dislike, and this is my last con, there are no commentators in the NBA Draft Combine. I wish that there were commentators, but there are no commentators. All you hear is the crowd in the background. So I'm going to be talking over this video. But now we're going to talk about the pros. Something that I think you guys are really going to be interested in hearing. First of all, let me cut back to this gameplay real quick. You guys see how it cuts away like that and it makes it look like someone's recording it on their phone? That is something that normally just happens in the streets. But based off of that, we may see it in the league too. So keep your eye out for that. But yeah, Kevin Knox is straight up terrorizing our play if you guys haven't noticed it's happening it's still going on as i'm speaking that is how bad this is he has about like nine points maybe four for eight shooting i think that's where he is right now so yeah it's it's pretty crazy either way let me get on to these pros right when it comes to the pros the improved gameplay allows it to actually be playable and i don't want to be rude to nba live 18 but it wasn't really playable it was playable but it wasn't playable if you get what i'm saying for those of you guys who really loved NBA Live, yeah, you guys were able to play it, but for those of the people who switched between the games, 2K and Live, it wasn't really playable. The other thing is the nice animations. If you guys notice, there are some nice animations in this game, like, like that one right there. That's a very nice animation, nice contested animation. Now, the fact that he took that shot, kind of, it's kind of shocking to me, but hey, it's still a nice animation. But watch this. See how the AI moves without the ball? Just how Kevin Knox did to get the open three. That is something that we have not really seen in NBA video games. NBA 2K video games, really. And NBA Live has been doing that. Like, they've actually been bringing awareness to the AI. Which is something I noticed the moment I played NBA Live 19. Alright, alright, okay, okay, okay. Back to the topic. Back to the topic. The other thing, I love the fact that they brought back the NBA Draft Combine, and I love this little archetype system that they have. You notice? Oh my god. Oh, ooh. Ooh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I Did Kevin Knox just break that man so bad that his family dis... Mm. Mm -mm. Can't even get that out. I can't even get that out. Anyways. Let me just finish off what I have to say here, and I'm going to go. Because the game's almost over. The cutscene's about to play. So, I love the fact that they brought back the NBA Draft Combine. And I love the fact that they have this little archetype system where you get to choose who you want to model your player after. And you can change that anytime you want. That's something that really, really, really improves the overall experience of the one. Because you won't get tired of using this one guy throughout the entire process, the entire time of this game's life cycle. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that sub button and I will see you in my next one. The NBA scouting combine is now behind us and I know you were keeping a close observation, Max, on some of those prospects. Give me your observations. Yes, indeed. The combine, Stephen A, is useful because we can see there are levels to this, right? Like everyone knows the top guys. But what about the next level, the lottery picks, right? Like you're looking for that diamond in the rough. Who's going to surprise you? Yeah, you're talking about the one, am I correct? I mean, he went up against some stiff competition. I, I thought he did well. Yeah, I, I think he did well enough. You know, I would say, put it this way. I'm interested, but not inspired. I'm a little bit more than interested. I think he's a top five pick. He definitely should be top 10 or 15. And if he's not, I'd have a big time problem with that because I think he's that kind of threat on the court. Yeah, he has potential. But now the, the key is, can he unlock that potential? And this is why I bristle Stephen A. Smith when people like you call him the one because right now we can see he's one of many.